Really excited for this week's podcast. I get to sit down with one of my very best friends, uh, Poncho Romero. He's the president and CEO of uh, Vance Heating and Cooling here in town. Uh, this guy um, owns multiple businesses in Idaho, Utah, and Arizona, uh, where he has uh, branches of advanced heating and cooling. He has advanced drywall and painting, uh, all valley garage doors, all valley fireplaces, uh, Koch Mechanical, Creative Metal Design. He's a partner at Kelso Industries. Uh, went to Boise State. Um, this guy is the best of the best. He is uh, just a phenomenal guy. I asked him today to talk a little bit about how he handles relationships because I've been in the business a long time and I don't know anyone that does it better than uh, Poncho. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this. Uh, Poncho Romero from Advanced Heating and Cooling. Thanks for coming on. Hey, we, thanks, this buddy. has been exciting. Thanks for having me. I just told you it was going to be an hour. <laughs> That's like, a long time. You said you can't afford me for an hour. <laughs> no, I'll just send the change order. <laughs> oh, this will be fun. Hey, um, I know a lot of people. I don't I know, know that you. I've ever known anyone like you. Why do you say that? You're the most connected guy I know on the planet Earth. Uh-huh. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Okay. So let's talk seriously, first of all. Okay. There's a lot of people listen to this podcast that are business people that are either getting started in their career or trying to listen because we have good guests that are business leaders. You've been an owner, multiple businesses. We'll talk a little bit about that. But sure. if I say Poncho Romero to anybody in my circle that knows you, the first word that will come to everyone's mind is relationship. Well, that makes me feel good. Yeah. Yeah. It's because you take it seriously, right? I do. I do. I, I try to give my all and give 100 percent and everything. Talk about talk about your relationships over your your career and 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 how important it is to to build those relationships for business. Well, I've been doing it now. This is I think my 25th to 30th year uh, in the HVAC world and and dealing with developers, builders, general contractors, and and uh, very grateful, very humble. Uh, a lot of people, you know, along the way. I just uh, kind of told myself that I would always stay humble and uh, don't forget where I came from. Uh, work hard and always do what you say you're going to do. So uh, when we do a project with uh, BVA, let's say, uh, um, don't go in there and 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 uh, you know overcommit and and uh, not follow through. Um, be honest. Come in and uh, and just stay true. And it's uh, helped advance, uh, grow tremendously through the years just by following up and just doing what you say you're going to do. Seems kind of basic, right? But it's, it's kind of a forgotten yeah. deal, right? Yeah, and, and, and it's weird out there right now. I mean, uh, I always try to call everybody. I know everybody's into the social media world these days and Facebook, podcasts, everything else. But I actually pick up the phone and call you. And I know I'm bugging you sometimes, but I'm just like, hey, buddy, how are you? Yeah. How are you doing? You know, and I think that means a lot to, to people, just to not forget, uh, remember, you know, who they are and who their kids are and who their family is. I think that that means a lot. So by building relationships through the years, um, I've always made that a point to um, not just talk about work all the time, be more involved with people's lives. And, and you know me, I'm always wanting to be a uh, part of somebody's life and ask how they are and ask how they're doing, what's going on. But it's so dang authentic, man. It's not just, I mean, a lot of you, you, there's a lot of people in the world who say, hey, how you doing? How you been? Yeah. But with you, it's different. Why is it different? Um, I, think, I think that I'm just a, a, a different, I'm a different guy. I, I really want to get to know people and understand and learn. I learn a lot just by uh, kicking back and, you know, listening. Like, for instance, your father. I mean, I was 20 years old in the first meeting that I met your dad, and and I just sat there for a week on a project in downtown Salt Lake, and I didn't say a word. I just listened, and I, I really got to know him that well. And and uh, after the meeting, you know, I I wanted to know more. So by saying that, I think uh, when you get to know somebody, you, you need to be genuine. You need to uh, get to know that person a little bit better than just sit in meetings or, or I think people have an agenda that. Uh, People think they always want something, right? Like, uh, yeah. for real. Like when you're sitting in a meeting and, you, and you're going against a bunch of people in a, let's say, a project or whatever, right? People, people feel that uh, you're not genuine or you're just there to, for the purpose of that meeting or that conversation, right? I always try to take it to a whole nother level because 
when I build a relationship, I really want to be 100% whole and in. I don't want to be one and done on just anything in life. I want, I want to be a part of that forever. Where did that come from? Because you just described, I mean, you just put in words perfectly, Poncho Romero. Like, like where did that come from? Because that's not normal. Most people function on a pretty superficial level. Like, they keep it up here. It's nice. It's polite. It's, sure. hey, how you doing? It's, it's here. But with you, in all the time I've known you and I've watched you, not just with me, but with others, I mean, hell, no matter where we go in the world, you know somebody. <laughs> I try. The, the relationships are deep and they're meaningful. So is it your parents? Was it your upbringing? Why, why is that part of who you are? I, I think I learned that when I was young from my, uh, my grandfather. He was, uh, he was always uh, uh, in the business, uh, and he told me at a young age, he, he just he would talk about work and stuff like that, but he would talk about these people as being his friends mm. and basically his family. So I think I learned that at a young age that uh, be real and uh, always, always treat people like you want to be treated and, and uh, don't, don't blow people off. You know, take the time to, to get to know somebody. And, and I mean, how many, how many times do you go up to somebody and just say, hey, how are you? You know, what do you do? You know, how's it going? Well, I was going to say something else, but I'm going to say this now. I, you know, listen, I, I'm 56 now, right? And so. Getting up there. I'm getting up there <laughs> and I, and I drive pretty hard with business and everything. It's just always busy. Right. Sure. I got very few people that ever call me and say, Hey man, how are you doing? And then they say, no, I really want to know how are you doing? How, how are things going with you? Are you okay? How's your family? How's your, and you do it to me every two weeks, every three weeks, I get a call from you saying, Hey, no, how are you really doing? And Man, I appreciate it. It's 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 genuine. It's a real thing, and I, and I know you do it with so many other people. It's a big deal, um, and I think if anything to be learned, if people are trying to, it, it is it pays off too, right? Talk to talk to us about your business life, because I know I, I do business with a lot of people that do business with you, and sure. everyone would say the same thing. I think being genuine and authentic, doing it for the right reason, really caring about people, not just BSing them, but really caring. What does that mean? in business over 30 years? Yeah, I'll tell you what, I, uh, when I was younger, it, it was really hard for me because I would, I would go into people and talk to them like that and they would just be like, uh, <laughs> dude, who is this guy? This guy's full of crap. He, he's just, you know, what's, what's the agenda here? What does he want, you know? And, and it, it took me years and years of, of, you know, keep communicating with people, keep talking to people and getting to know people and, and uh, be real. And then, you know, eventually they're like, holy cow, this guy, you know, he really cares. And, and that's a real thing. I, I, I don't go in um, into a meeting or an agenda or meeting people based on I'm going to get something out of it, you know. I, I really, I'm a really genuine guy, you know, and I really want to, to know you and say hi to you and just see how you're doing. I, and it comes back, right? It comes back ten times full. You, you go talk to people and you get to know people and... And not just in business, in, in real life, you know? I'm just laughing because <laughs> you, know. you, you like always just blow my mind. Oh, sorry. So I'm just thinking like like two months, you know, a couple months ago. Maybe it was a month ago. <laughs> but I'm, I'm texting back and forth with you. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? And you send me over. Oh, I know what it was. What was it? <laughs> so I was out pheasant hunting at Tim Reitman's place. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so I'm out there and I'm talking about, you know, I'm talking to Tim and I mention your name. He's like, oh. Poncho, I love Poncho, and he goes off on Poncho. He goes, he's the greatest guy. So I text you. I'm like, hey, guess who I'm with? And I sent you a picture of me and Tim, and you're like, uh, that's great, but look who I'm with. Just totally spontaneously, and you're golfing with Brian Erlacher. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's uh, he's a great guy, and and I met him through um, check this out through another friend. You know, I got to know him for the last 25 years, which is uh, Ryan Eaton with United Rentals. Yeah. And he always knew that I was like this huge Chicago Bears fan. And, and he asked me one day, he goes, you want to play golf with Brian Urlacher? And, you know, when you, when you show up to there, you, you, you try not to be starstruck or whatever. But I really got to know Brian Urlacher. What a stud. <laughs> and now he's like, hey, Ponch, you know, let, let's go golf. Or let's I mean, go hang you've, out. Been playing, you've been playing golf with him oh, yeah. a bunch, right? Oh, yeah, just hanging out. And What's he like? He's just awesome. He's, he's just like us, talking, hanging out, and uh, – loves golf loves sports loves people 
it's crazy. I, I thought that, you know, when you go see like your idol, he doesn't know I'm even his, you know, like um, I love him so much. Like he's the best in the world, you know, for a Chicago Bear athlete. But I grew up with Brian Urlacher. I mean, I have his jersey signed. I have his shoes, you know. So I'm this guy, right? And I'm showing up to play golf with this guy. And I'm trying to not like, dude, can I get your did, autograph? Did you beat him? I, he beat me the first day, and then I, I got him the second day. <laughs> <laughs> Punch was a very good golfer. I That's tried. Fun. And, uh, and then the other one that, uh, that, that, uh, that people listening would be interested, uh, you had a little something to do with old Griffey. Oh, yeah, I love Griffey. Talk about, talk about Ken Griffey Jr. And so, again, uh, meeting people and uh, um, a good friend of mine, Zach Abels, he's a, a golf pro down in Twin Falls, and me and him became really, really good friends, but uh, he has a lot of friends in the Nike world. So I've just been invited and, and fortunate to get invited to go play golf with uh, Ken Griffey Jr. And over the last four or five at, years. At Michael Jordan's course. Yeah, Michael Jordan's course at the Grove, yeah. That, that doesn't suck. <laughs> Yeah, so you show up there, and uh, I'll tell you a good story. So I show up there, and I didn't know really what to expect, and, and um, I'm all excited, you know, and we we pull up to the front gate, and there's this big guy there, and they're like, yeah, we're here to see Griffey. And the hey, hey, pull up, pull up. Uh, I want to I pull up a picture of this so what, okay. those, those watching on YouTube can see this because I didn't even know Michael Jordan had a golf course until you told me this. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty – it's like one of the probably – uh, coolest places on earth. It's it's heaven for golfers. And where is it? Um, it's right in Hobie Sound, Florida. It's about an hour and a half uh, south of Orlando. Okay. Yeah. So there it is. There, there it is. There it is. Yeah. The twenty-three. Yeah, twenty-three. Yeah. And so you pull up. Yeah. So so I pull up. We pull up to the gate, and uh, the the guy at the front gate, and uh, I'm I'm I guarantee Griffey told him, but we we were telling him we had a tea time with Griffey, and. Uh, the guy goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I hear that all the time. You guys need to turn around and go the other way. So I'm in the back seat, you know, just, like, freaking out. I'm like, dude, we're not going to be able to play. I can't hang out with Griffey and Jordan and all that stuff. So, yeah, he was messing with us, and we, we finally got in. But I'll tell you what, every time I go there, I'm like a, I'm a, little, like a little kid. You know, you get to see all these uh, cool stars like uh, DJ Khaled, Mark Wahlberg, you know. That's another thing, you know, I always thought um, – I would be taller can, than Mark Wahlberg. And, can can, and he's can, than can I DJ am. Khaled play golf? He can play. He no can way. Yeah, he doesn't hit it far, but he hits it in the middle. Yeah, he's, he's good. And, they, you know, that's uh, a nice way of saying no. Yeah, uh, you know, like uh, Reggie Jackson, Sheffield. I got to, you know, I had the opportunity to meet all these really, really cool people and sit with them and talk to them like I'm yeah. talking to you. And, you know, you're just sitting there and you're like, wow, this is, this is really cool. I'm really fortunate and happy. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and then Griffey's son's going to come here, play football. Yeah, yeah. Zach was uh, telling me that he was playing down at Florida A and M. So while I was out playing with uh, Griff, I was just like, "Hey, man, what do you what do you think about Boise State? You know, what about think about Tevin coming to Boise State?" And he kind of threw it out there a little bit, and he's like, "Nah, it's not a bad idea or whatever." And I didn't really want to push the issue, but I, I really wanted him to come to Boise State. You know. So that went on for about six, seven months, and then finally he called, and he goes, hey, what do you think about Tevin going to Boise State? So you know me. I'm, I'm calling everybody. I'm like, hey, man, hey, you know? So we, we got him into Boise State. No, well, that'll be fun. Yeah. That'll be really fun. Yeah. He was just up here recently, right? Yeah, he came down, and uh, good good story. So brings Tevin in, and uh, we go down there. I, I, I didn't want to, you know, it was parents' day and all that, but I wanted to come and say hi, so I went and said hi, and then uh, – we had that big, that really big storm a few months ago, and and I gave Tevin my number, and he called me, and he's like, "Ponch, you know, can you help me out, man?" And I'm like, "Sure." And so I go over to his uh, his apartment down there on Broadway, and dude, he's he's sitting on like a milk crate, no no uh, furniture, no bed, no nothing. I'm, so I call Griff. I'm like, "What's up, dude? Doesn't he have a TV?" So me and this kid are, you know, he's hopping in my car. Met the first time, I've, you know, second time I've ever met the kid, and. We're heading out to, you know, Best Buy. We're buying, uh, you know, like PlayStation 4s or 5s or whatever it is now and big screen TVs. I, I feel bad for them, right? So I'm like swiping the card and trying to help the kid out. Can that be an NIL expense now? Uh, apparently. <laughs> I, did my, I did my due diligence, right? <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah, so, um, that's so uh the other thing about you is uh, everywhere we go together, you know somebody. So you grew up, you grew up in Utah. Yeah, I grew yeah. up next to you. 
You say yeah, that on the but. west side. <laughs> you do not. Listen, for for anyone that knows how to read a map. <laughs> so, Poncho grew up east of Redwood Road. <laughs> no west. In the rich rich part of Jordan, West Jordan, Utah. There we go. I grew up in Magna. He always is trying. You know, he, he, I'm I'm in all these meetings with him, and he'll he'll pitch him. Oh, I grew up in. I grew up in the poor part of Utah. I'm like, dude, you were one of those rich kids at, at West Jordan. That is not true. I I, I grew up a, a middle class family. Uh, grandfather owned a, a chemical company, and you know, it wasn't rich. <laughs> and then and then uh, you've done a few other things too on the side, right? Tell us a little bit about your your uh, other side ventures. Yeah, so a, a couple of my buddies. Uh, uh, wanted to come up and they wanted to start a couple of businesses together and and uh so i got involved with them we own a, a fireplace company with uh, alex furioso and we own a garage door company with pat and the guys uh from post and and so we all own that together and then um a couple of my other guys uh that worked at advanced i was uh trying to get them to come up in advance but we own a a drywall company and a painting company in the modular world uh stewart and eric that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, so it's been fun. <clears throat> I'm te- you haven't, I, don't, I haven't heard told you this story yet, but um, I was coming across the parking lot um, a couple weeks ago, and one of your guys pulled up, and and so I knocked on his window, and he rolled it down. And um, I said, hey, how are you doing? I just hadn't seen him for a while. And um, talk to me a little bit about, because you take mentorship really seriously. I know you do, because I've known you now enough years that the people you hire that work for you, they're more than just employees to you. You take care of them. You take an interest in them and their family. And this kid in that parking lot just said, man, I love Punch. Oh, I love this company. He's done so much for me and my family. And it was this really tender moment I had with him. But that's, that's kind of what you do with, with your employees. How important is that for you? That's, that's very important to me. Uh, when, I, when I was growing up, I moved uh, to Idaho when I was uh, 17, 18 years old. And, and um, I met this guy. His name was Kerry Reynolds. And it was kind of a fluke deal. It was at a Jackson's on the Boulevard in Caldwell. And I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I was just kind of hanging out with my grandparents for the summer. I didn't know if I was going to go to college or, or what I was going to do. And I met this guy, and, and he said, uh, hey, we're going to start a heating and cooling company. It's a true story. And, and uh, to this day, I got to thank Kerry Reynolds and, and Darren and all those guys. They brought me in as an 18-year-old kid, and and they treated me like family and like I was part of something. And and I just, I just never forgot that. So when I had the opportunity, you know, to do something on my own and, and uh, um, doing that for 14 years and then, and then coming and, and doing my own thing, um, all these guys wanted to come because they knew that it would be different. You know, uh, our company is based on family, friends, and uh, building something together cool. You know, we, I can't do it by myself, so I, I need them to help you know, build advanced and, and build something cool. So every guy that works at advanced, uh, I, I know them by first and last name. I know their, their kids, their wives. I make that a point, you know, to, to show them what, what could be for them. Hmm. We pay for all their schooling. You know, we take care of their families. Um, we do a lot for our employees. And I think that that's very important, especially this day and age, right? I mean, a lot of people go out there and they fill out an application to get a job and, and, uh, they just feel like they're another number at, at most, you know, most places. But when they come to advanced, I mean, we, we give them all the tools and the opportunity to succeed in life. If it's with family, school, or college, or whatever, we, we pay for, uh, you know, all their, all their school at CWI. And then after CWI, if they want to go into an engineering program like AJ and a couple of the other guys or, you know, want to go into... Um, construction management at Boise State, all that stuff. We we want them to succeed, so we help pay for all that stuff for all of our employees. Well, and if you <clears throat> if you look at recruitment and retention in the environment we're in right now, yeah, um, having that family feel of hey, there's something more here. This is this is where I belong. It's where I grow. It's where I develop. Sure, uh, it's it's brilliant from the business side of things, even though it's really authentic and genuine. You can't fake that though, right? No, no, we're. We're definitely the bad news bears of the mechanical world. I mean, you come into our office, everybody's high five and woo, you know, having a good time. It, it, it's very different. But <clears throat> excuse me, when I when I was when I was growing up though that way and, and coming up through the mechanical world and and 
and meeting all those people, I, I, it got a little stuffy, right? And so, sometimes it, it, it doesn't feel like it's home, you know, when you're going to work. When you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, man, I got to go there. So when, when I bought Advance and, and started doing things kind of our way, you know, with the guys that have been with me 20, 25 plus years, they felt the same way. So when we hire people, or yeah. we, we want them to wake up in the morning and, and want to be there at 7 a.m. and want to work all day and, and you know, have a goal and, and have goals to succeed. And uh, I, I kind of wasn't feeling that way when, you know, when I was younger. But now, sure, it, it's awesome. Culture's contagious. Yeah, it, it's awesome. Hey, let's let's uh, shift over to sports. Okay, we've done some fun sport things together. Oh, we I... have. Yeah. <laughs> so, you didn't go this year, but Holt did. But let's talk about what happened at the waste management. Oh, oh my gosh! Did they call that the waste manager or wasted management? <laughs> my golly, I'm glad I didn't go. It was your first year not going, right? It was my first year in ten years not going. Yeah, I, I heard it got out of control and. Uh, they couldn't get tickets fast enough, and like all of a sudden, 500,000 people are hanging out on 16. That's crazy. <laughs> it looked like a disaster. It was a disaster. Oh, we had so much fun there when we went, remember? Yeah, we did. We, we had us right down on the front row. and Heck yeah. If you hang out with Poncho, you get some pretty good tickets. Uh, it was fun. <laughs> that was fun. And then you went to Super Bowl. Yeah, my, my wife's an a, a avid 49ers fan, and uh, she, she gave me the, the puppy dog eyes, and... <laughs> And uh, the rest is history. I had to take her to the Super Bowl. and it, it, You know what? I've never been to a Super Bowl, so I didn't really know what to expect. But it was awesome. The Super Bowl, if you ever get a chance to go, you got to go. It was great. It was cool. Pageantry, the whole thing. Was... Oh, yeah. They do it right. Not a great ending for her. Hold no, on. no. I had, to, I had to, you know, I had to carry her all the way to the airplane, uh, kicking, crying, and screaming. But we got her home. <laughs> oh, man. That was a great game, though. Oh, it was awesome. It was, a, it <laughs> and, was one of the best uh, Super Bowls I've seen in a long and time. And then you're a little bit of a UFC guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I love going to the UFC with you guys, and, and that's fun. Yeah. yeah. Tell, uh, just for our audience, uh, you became really good friends with Derek. Yeah, the Beast? The Beast. Yeah, the Beast. Uh, Johnny Ramirez, another good friend yeah. of mine, uh, um, he introduced me to the Beast. So he does a lot of truck shows in Vegas and stuff like that, and I've been fortunate to – meet a lot of the UFC fighters and MMA fighters and stuff like that. So anytime Derek fights, man, it's, it's, it's fun, right? Oh, it's totally fun. <laughs> He's and jumping. It's so, it's so personal, right? Cause, yeah. Cause you guys know him so well that, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. He's kind of not fighting as much anymore now. He's kind of over his prime a little bit. Oh man. If you got hit like that, wouldn't you stop fighting? I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the most knockouts in the UFC history, right? He's right. the knockout king, but he's yeah. been getting hammered lately. Yeah, when, I think age is catching up with him now. He'll tell you. He's, he's just like, I'm not young anymore. And he, he says he tries to give it his all. And his, his poor wife, you should see his wife. His wife's over there just, you know, wincing every time he gets in the ring. And, yeah, I think, I think he's uh, hey, I think he's pull, done. pull up Derek Lewis for us. Oh, yeah, look at that guy. Look at that guy. Oh, jeez. And, and he probably had some of the best post-fight interviews in the history of MMA, right? Oh, forever. I mean, you Remember watch the him. one where he pulled his, his, his pants? Pulled his pants off. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and was telling people how hot he was. Oh, yeah. Temperature-wise. And, and you know what? It, it's crazy if you, uh, if you just sit down and, and, and have dinner with him or whatever. He's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in your life. Uh, he's unreal. Just a, a great guy. Okay, now a huge jazz fan, right? Yeah, it's hard to be a jazz fan. <laughs> uh, What's the plan there? You know, uh, I think Smith has a, has a bunch of great ideas, and he's got Danny Ainge in there now, and um, they've got a lot of first-round draft picks. They haven't done much yet, though. It, it, it's really hard. Um, I, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, you know, at the old Salt Palace, we, we, we got to watch, you know uh, – we got to watch Jordan and the Pistons and Ainge, oh, yeah. and, you know, Magic and all that stuff and all these great teams. And then we get Stockton and Malone, you know, and we're like, yeah, we got to, you know. Forever. Forever, right? Stockton and Malone. Right? But, I mean, I, mean the, the, I think that's the kind of the, um, the realm that we need to get back into as yeah. far as the Utah Jazz go and, and, and try to put a team together, right, that want to be in Utah. That's the hard thing. Yeah. 
It's getting all those guys to want to be in Utah. Did you hear what uh, Jokic said, though, this weekend? No, what he he talked about him ever leaving Denver, and he's like, I'm never leaving, no matter what. Yeah. He's like, I'm here. We need one of those guys. Yeah, but, but see what they built there, right? Yeah. I mean, he, he loves it there. Well, he was talking about, um, is he ever going to, because him and uh, Luca are such good friends. Yeah. Are they going to ever play together? And he said, only if Luca comes here because I'm never leaving. We need that That's the for the Jazz. Point. Exactly. Something like that. Yeah. All right, Poncho, what's next for Poncho? Tell us about uh, business and what well, are you looking forward to? Well, it looks like we have a lot of stuff going on together. We have, uh, what do we have? 10, 15 years left together. <laughs> I longer than that. You mean of life? No, I just, I'm just talking or to work. that I know of. <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean, uh, uh, meeting you and your dad and, and uh, Courtney and, and, you know, Ball Ventures, Ball Ventures, Alquist, Corey and everybody. I mean, I consider you guys family. And, uh, we got a great thing going, don't we? We do. And, and all the things that you've done for me and advanced and the employees and the families. Holy well, cow, man. I, I just don't want to see it stop. I'm having a, I'm having a lot of fun. It's mutual. Um, I, I will say, because we do have a lot of people uh, listening to this, so if people want to get a hold of you or Advanced, Advanced, key, what's your website? Yeah, advancedheatingandcooling.com, or, or just call the office, ask for Poncho, I'll answer. <laughs> I'm always available. <laughs> you are. Well, one of my favorite things you say, and I know it's not true. What's that? Because no matter when I call you, I'm like, how you doing? You're like, just working my butt off. <laughs> just grinding. Just working my butt off. Grinding away. <laughs> just working my butt off. And then the next question is like, where are you? <laughs> well, I can't tell you. Yeah. And it's usually like. Oh, yeah. I'm honest, pretty though. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'm, I'm I, start, I started using your line. It works really well. It does, doesn't it? Because no matter, you're like, how's it going? I'm just working my butt off. Heck yeah. What just can I do for you? Grinding away. What can I do to help you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. There it is. Advanced Heating and Cooling. Well, Poncho, you're a dear friend. We love you. Appreciate all the work you do. And uh, your friendship means a lot. And thanks for coming on and uh, having some fun today. Appreciate oh, yeah. it. Thank you so much. Buddy. All right. Thanks.